right, welcome to a bonus edition of the World of Cocktail Podcast. I'm Eric Schmidt. I'm Jonathan Sleep. And I'm Donald Wine. And the year's coming to an end. It's been a wonderful 2021 in CONCACAF, our glorious little region of soccer in the world. And we just want to talk about it. All of the fun stuff that's happened. Um, CONCACAF's 60th anniversary, um, a major milestone. Honestly, as some people might say the 50th anniversary is the big one. It's CONCACAF. So maybe the 60th is really what we uh, should be celebrating. They sure played like it this year the whole the I mean, whole region we just wanted and we celebrated the 60th year of CONCACAF by launching this podcast um and i know that i do want to give a, a shout out to um all of the member nations where we have listeners um so thanks to that um maybe we'll pick up a few more um i know we have some slackers out there yes i want i want to point out that as of this moment to the end of the year we are at 21 member nations where people have listened to our beautiful podcast. So thank you to more than half of CONCACAF for tuning in and celebrating our soccer. Now the other half, get your shit together. Uh, 2022 is a big year. So we hope to have you tune in then. Now you think for, for this, we would really appreciate the 21 of you uh, nation member nations out there that have uh, subscribe to or listen to the podcast. But for the other 21, uh, don't think that we're letting you off the hook. Some of you, you know, have some uninhabited islands and, you know, we respect that. <laughs> but uninhabited islands can still subscribe to podcasts. So if you are on one of those uninhabited islands, subscribe to the podcast wherever you get your podcast. If they're uninhabited, aren't they? Doesn't that mean that no one is there? There can be computers um, there. I mean, there can be computers there. The Something other thing I was going to say is, Uninhabited islands are the perfect place to host pod on the road. Oh, yes. This is true. So if you're an uninhabited island, then email us uh, so that we can or contact us so that uh, (laughs) we can go to your uninhabited island. We would like to experience that. We'll save that for the Patreon. We'll uh, raise funds for that that way. Um, But let's get to it. 2021, a lot of stuff happened. I mean, it's crazy to think about now. But we came into the year with like no plans and nothing really set in stone as to what the year would look like for soccer. Um, We were still having closed door matches in a lot of places. Um, January, we had a couple friendlies. The March window was still in flux. But over the course of the year, we got back to what we do best. And that's concacafing. That's some weird stuff. So let's talk about it. First up, let's just let's just start with the big thing. The trademark competition in CONCACAF, the Gold Cup. The Gold Cup this year won by the United States of America. Shout out USA. Uh, USA defeats Mexico in the final in fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada. Now, for me, like, Vegas was part of the story. Donald, you were there. Don't you feel like that's the spiritual home of the Gold Cup is Las Vegas, Nevada? Uh, it's my spiritual home. I don't know about the Gold Cup um, <laughs> or CONCACAF for that for that matter, but uh, it was a pretty cool event. It, the thing about it, it was the first event, if you remember. It's like the first sporting event that was open to a full house uh, at Allegiant Stadium. So uh, we obviously have had a few more since then, or they have at least. So uh, I think the next Gold Cup is scheduled to be there, I th- or at least they are rumored to. Uh, get it back in 2023 so they'll be much more prepared for the onslaught of american fans and mexican fans uh when that happens yeah and i mean for me i think having like a destination city like that really will help elevate the already prestigious gold cup because like it should be a party it should be a good time i know in the past they've done it in chicago they've done it in new york they've done it in california I think Las Vegas, like that is a destination and it'd be really cool if CONCACAF going forward sticks with that. I I do want to mention just a a blanket, like kudos to the region, to, to CONCACAF in all seriousness, like before we keep going, this year was hell to organize for us, right? Like 
Mm -hmm. you know, for all of you out there, it was hell to organize your life uh, in your little apartment or your small room in your house, whatever that is. They had to organize a whole confederation and all of these events we're going to talk about. So uh, I do commend them for figuring out a way to get most of it done. Now, there are some they probably didn't get done, but uh, (laughs) they did. They did quite a bit in 2020. It was a really busy year for all of us. So uh, we really appreciate having all this soccer to talk about. Yeah, Yeah. especially when you think about all of the uh, logistical um, issues with dealing with uh, 42 member nations where we have various covid protocols and various issues so like i mean just shout out to them for for being able to navigate all of that so um especially in an ever-changing world as um guidelines changed sometimes it seems like um on on very short notice so they did did a fantastic job there yeah i mean it was tough with covid i mean the gold cup is like the example of what covid did to everything that you could possibly have planned uh this gold cup was the first one with the preliminary round um they actually had like a plan down in miami because you know like south florida in july just perfect conditions to be playing outside soccer like great job by Concacaf there putting it near their headquarters um but you have you had to play in for the last few spots of the gold cup uh cuba actually had to drop out uh they couldn't get they didn't I wouldn't say they couldn't get their paperwork together in time, but they didn't get their paperwork together in time to get into the United States to play the game. Now, obviously there's some geopolitical stuff going on. Um, Cuba, not the easiest for them to get into the U S understandable, but like they didn't even get their COVID testing stuff in line. CONCACAF even came out and said after the, they had announced that it's like, hey, Cuba's not going to be able to make it for this game. French Guiana's getting pushed through. They're getting the pass. Cuba just like, it was a clerical error. Afterward, CONCACAF was even like, yo, these guys didn't even have their stuff together. So Cuba really fumbling there, missed out on the opportunity to qualify for the Gold Cup. Um, Really disappointing. They had to drop out. Also, even after qualifying in the preliminary round Curacao had to drop out uh, because of a COVID outbreak within their team. So in CONCACAF fashion, you had Curacao dropping out on like the eve of the tournament and CONCACAF just deciding on a whim. All right. uh, Okay. Guatemala, you're in. Who had just fired their coach. (laughs) Who had just fired their coach because he did not make the goal. (laughs) And, and that's probably the most clear. pocket cap thing of the year. He didn't lose a <laughs> single game either. He yeah. just drew the entire time. So he didn't lose a game. <laughs> he doesn't qualify. So he gets fired. Um, and then they get six, a- five, six, six, not even five, maybe three, four days after he gets fired. Um, Guatemala then gets, you know, put into the gold cup in, in replace of, of Curacao. So um, yeah. And just, all of their um, players had scattered back to their club. So then they had to recall all of the players that were going that because they couldn't just recall anyone. They had to recall the guys that they had brought in for the prelims because that was their Gold Cup roster. So they had to recall all those guys. They delayed the game by a day just so they could, you know, get to wherever they needed to get to. Uh, I tell you, that's the most concrete cap thing of the year. That, whole, that scenario right there, Guatemala not losing a game, not making the Gold Cup, then getting in based on COVID, and then – because they didn't get in, they fired their coach, and then they had to get a new coach and get all their players back. That is that is CONCACAF for you. Yeah, and then they had to redo the schedule because, I mean, this happened like two days before the tournament was supposed to start. So they actually had to reschedule like their first game of the tournament just to like make it competitive, and they didn't advance. It wasn't competitive. Um, now, they had that preliminary round to qualify for the Gold Cup, because there was just three spots up for grabs with the expansion of the tournament. Why were there only three spots up for grabs for this tournament? Because one of them went to guest team, guest nation, Qatar. Qatar participating in their first gold cup. Um, gentlemen, how do you think Qatar did as far as like assimilating into the CONCACAF? Fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, I, will, I will say as an aside, um, 
they have the uh, they have the Arab Cup going on right now that they're obviously hosting because they're you know they host everything now. And FIFA for the first time basically sanctioned it and said this is now the FIFA Arab Cup. I hope the Caribbean is taking notes because I think the Caribbean should do the exact same thing. And then when you do do this and it gets sanctioned by FIFA, we would love to be the ambassadors of this tournament. I think the three of us would be very good at being the hype men in all the stadiums. We, I mean, we, you could spread us out or you could put us in one stadium, however it works. We're very flexible, but just holler at us about that. FIFA, get on your grind, sanction the, the Caribbean Cup, and make it a FIFA tournament. Even the Windward Islands Championship. I'd be happy to go down yeah. and cover West that. Indies but Tournament, we, cool. Yeah. Whatever it is. The ABC Tournament, whatever you guys got to do. Whatever you guys got to do. Um, so, Qatar... Gets into the Gold Cup, actually goes on a run. They fall in the semifinals to the eventual champions, U.S. Wonderful, exciting, thrilling game, the semifinal. Uh, Qatar actually had a penalty late with the game tied 0-0. An excellent shit-talking performance by Kellen Acosta, as we found out about after the game. Uh, led to them missing the penalty. And then Giassi Zardes steals the winner at the end. Um, to put the U.S. into the final, uh, which they eventually won. And I'd like to remind everyone that the U.S. won the Gold Cup <laughs> over Mexico. Any other thoughts on the Gold Cup before we move on? No, not really. I'm just really excited to get to this next tournament, Who, which I'm a little upset that you put the other one first because this next tournament um, I feel is the most important, um, not only in CONCACAF, but in world football. Um, so... This is, see, the Gold Cup is the appetizer. This is the main course. Everything else is just going to be dessert. He just did chops is what he did. He's just eliminating the competitions yeah. as we go along till we yeah. get to the meat. We're, we're, trying to, we're trying to engage the listeners early. We want everyone, everyone's just going to be fast forwarding to get to this part because now we're talking about the conclusion of the 2019 to 2020 to 2021 <laughs> CONCACAF Nations League. The greatest most prestigious tournament in global football. Gentlemen, just how fulfilled are you that we've finally got a CONCACAF Nations League under our belt? I mean, I'm ecstatic. I mean, because that trophy um, deserved the... uh, It deserved the recognition. It deserved a chance for someone to win it. Um, I'm just so excited that the, the tournament not only, you know, finally concluded... Um, but it ended in one of um, I'm going to call the, my game of the year um, okay. just because of, I mean, yes, it, it concluded with a U.S. win, but like that game was full on CONCACAF. Like, like, I mean, oh, yeah. we'll, 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 we'll dive into it, but I mean, there, I mean, I probably 10 CONCACAF moments in that single game. Yeah. Now that beautiful silver trophy that they unveiled, that is now like it's up with like the Jules Rimet trophy as like the most famous in soccer um, now belongs to the United States after a thrilling three, two extra time victory over Mexico. We got a little bit of a theme here, U S beating Mexico. It's been a good year. It's been a very good year, but I know I was in Denver for the semifinals and final uh, Donald, you were as well. This what was it like being there for like the inaugural CONCACAF Nations League finals? It was one of the greatest nights of my life. Um, <laughs> it was it was outstanding from top to bottom. We saw a lot in, in both the semifinal and the final. If you're a U.S. fan, you got to see a lot of CONCACAFing. Oh, my God. The Honduras semifinal. You got to see even more in the Mexico game in the final. Uh, but it was... It, it was also right. It, we talked about it. It was just as we came back out of into the world from COVID. So to come back with that and come back with the bang that it came back with yeah. was everything. It set the tone for the summer. It set the tone for the rest of the year for the entire region. Uh, that I mean, if you've noticed that the, the conca caffing has only gone up from there and people, <laughs> it, hasn't, it hasn't gotten to that level, but everyone knows what the bar is because the bar was set very, very early with those games. Yeah, I mean, for me personally, like the semifinals in Denver, that was the first so, first big soccer game I had been to back since COVID. And that's just like jumping in the deep end of the pool of CONCACAF, where that first half, you just had like a masterclass in time-wasting by the Honduran team. Just 
every five minutes, somebody's going down. Someone's hurt. You're just taking all the time with a throw in. It's like, oh, you're cramping up already. Just it really, it was like a breath of fresh air after being inside for over a year. Um, and a thrilling finish that first semifinal um, with the U.S. snagging 1-0 win over Honduras, Mexico advancing in the other semifinal, with, which had its own conca in it. Um, but really, that final, that is, if you had to distill what – nonsense we deal with into like one game i think that was like the perfect game for people for outsiders to really get a taste of what's going on you had fights you had coaches getting red cards you had penalties you had missed penalties a lot of shit talking uh people throwing stuff from the stands uh geo reyna was actually hit with some stuff fights. Celebrating a goal. there was Multiple. fights people um, were choked yeah there was choking. Um, Tata Martino getting that red card for putting his arm around the ref at the VAR, VAR booth. Um, and th- then there was choking, not just of a physical player, but then choking by Mexico. And, yes. And Andres scored. And Andres There's scored two PKs him. in the second half of the extra time. <laughs> like, <laughs> what? I will mind. I will say this. There's been a lot of you out there who listened to the show and have gained the love for Nations League that we had already. And I want to let you know, do not fret. The greatest tournament in the world, the second edition is only nine months away. We are almost back. Nine months fall. away? It starts in, it starts in May. Oh, it, oh, it's, May. oh, yeah, it starts. Well, for, yeah. for, for all but a couple of teams, it starts in May. But for the, for the meat of it, it's September and October. That's when it's just nothing but Nations League and it's that's, that's 2022 be, problems. That's 2022, 2022 problems. So I'm just saying, what we're recapping. I know people are like, man, I need to get out there. I need to, I need to, I should have done this last time. Don't worry. It's coming soon. But that's why we recap. Now, I, I do want to add before we move on um, from Nations League and the glory of it, that you can still get your CONCACAF Nations League merchandise on Amazon right now. Um, so if you need holiday gifts uh, for your loved ones, for your friends, Maybe your favorite boss, podcast host, favorite podcast host, Amazon's CONCACAF shop still has all the Nations League merchandise you could possibly need. So highly recommended for all that. Any other thoughts on Nations League other than we're just waiting for the next one? It's the greatest tournament in the world. And it, it's it's lovely that we were able to recap it. It's lovely that it's a part of our region. I mean, if it was in like some place like, you know, Europe or something like that, I wouldn't care as much, but it's here. So we're, we're glad that it's here. We're glad that it's our tournament and we're glad that it set the tone for the year. I've got one more question to both of you. We're, we're all U S fans here. There were two key moments in that math, that final match, which one is more memorable and more special to you. First, is it Pulisic shushing the crowd in that photograph? after his goal to put them ahead. Is it that as like the premier moment for you? Or is it Kellen Acosta telling Andres Cordado that he's retired? For me, it's neither. For me, it's predicting that uh, Ethan Horvath was going to stop Guardado's penalty while he was being talked to by Kellen Acosta. Um, and you were in the stands. You can confirm this. Oh, yeah. Uh, that, is my, that, is my, that is my moment of the match because – it was a whole building saying, okay, we're going to penalties. And I was like, no, no, our man, Ethan Horvath is placed on this earth for a reason <laughs> is to win us the nation's league. And that he did. That'll always be the Ethan Horvath game. Mm-hmm. All right. And the man went out and got a Pepsi afterwards. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> so the victors go the spoils, you know? Exactly. So two big trophies for the U S uh, this summer, as far as senior national team goes, the next tournament we want to talk about, uh, the CONCACAF Men's Olympic Qualifying Tournament, did not go so well for the United States. Mexico being declared the winners. Honduras also getting into the Olympics um, by advancing past the U.S. in the semifinals. Do we want to talk about this or do we not want to talk about this? Uh, I just want to say that 
I forgot this tournament existed because I was so upset about it. Um, and that's why I say that the Nations League was the pace car for the year because it started the year for me. Yeah, I mean, I totally even forgot that this, I mean, it happened in January. Um, yeah, I just, I completely even forgot that this tournament had happened. Um, and then going to the show notes and preparing, it was just, I was instantly reminded about how terrible um, that semi, that semifinal was. Yeah, it was a bad game. Um, but related to Olympics qualifying, just a shout out for like the actual Olympics in CONCACAF. Um, Donald, do you want to talk about the women's side? Yeah, on the women's side, we did have uh, Canada win a gold medal uh, for the first time. The United States ended up securing the bronze. The, they were the favorites entering the Olympics, but uh, ended up with the bronze. But I think CONCACAF did quite well for themselves, considering that they got two out of three places on the podium. Yeah. Very good. Very good Olympic outing for the CONCACAF nations. Um, so we look forward to a better performance in the next Olympics, which I'm blanking on where it's supposed to be. Do we know where the next Olympics is? The next Olympics is in Paris in Ah. 2024. Olympic qualifying for the women will be next summer. So uh, also with uh, qualifying for the World uh, World Cup. So it's one tournament, the CONCACAF W Championship, a new tournament that came about this year. So we can put this in this recap, but that will debut next summer. See, what CONCACAF does best is just making up new events. Making up tournaments. Yeah, so big ter- big summer for the women uh, in 2022. Uh, just to touch on some other things that happened, the CONCACAF Futsal Championship, that took place back in May in Guatemala. Uh, Costa Rica taking home their fourth title, uh, beating the United States. Do we have any thoughts on the Futsal Championship? The U.S. made the final. All right, moving on. <laughs> Next is the 2021 CONCACAF Beach Soccer Championship. And that was taken home, uh, the title there, by El Salvador. Jonathan, you got any thoughts on this? Uh, I mean, the again, the U.S. made the final. Um, so that, that's, the, uh, that's, the, that's my thought. Well, El Salvador takes home the title uh, down in Costa Rica. That took place in May. Frank Velasquez with 11 goals uh, for El Salvador leading the way. So congrats to Frank and El Salvador. Uh, All right. Then just touching on some of the club championships, Monterey, uh, your CONCACAF Champions League champions. Uh, Any thoughts on that? I mean, I guess my biggest thought coming into this was, I think coming out of 2020, everyone thought that um, this was – potentially a chance for us to finally see a u.s team uh win or a u.s slash mls team win uh Con- the Concacaf champions league however um columbus crew just had a disastrous year um this year and did not um really do much of anything philadelphia union being the furthest um to go for the united states and actually casper shabilko um coming out of the tournament as the top goal scorer so um, may not have um, won it, but I mean, having a an MLS player in you know, in those top ask accolades at the end of the year um, is always a good thing. Now, Monterey did beat Club America in the final, so Monterey moves on to the Club World Cup coming up. I believe that's Qatar, right? They're doing that in. Yes, Isn't everything in Qatar now. Yeah. For the most part. It's either Qatar or Abu Dhabi, one or the other. The only other qualm, I not qualm. I just have issue with one of the teams that made it to the Concacaf Champions League. The fact that uh, Atlanta United was just gifted a spot, um, but of course, uh, like Atlanta sports do, they they choked that opportunity away. Mm. Yeah, mm. you hate to see it. Um, and then Concacaf League, there's really one major story to come out of this. And I feel like it is the most important story of the year in CONCACAF. And that is our man, Ronnie Brunswick. You might have seen this in the news back in September. We talked about it on a podcast. We talked about it on the podcast. Honestly, I don't think we've talked about it enough because this is like, this is like the North star of 2021 for CONCACAF. 
Ronnie Brunswick, the vice president of Suriname and the owner of Inter Mongo Tapo, uh, CONCACAF League, you know, it's it's the second tier club championship in the region. Dude is 60 years old. He's the vice president of the country. He owns a team and he started himself up top for the first match against CD Olympia. The man is 60 years old. He put in a 54 minute shift in a game, a continental championship. Uh, CD Olympia won the match 6 0. Brunswick came off after 54 minutes, replaced, of course, by his son up top. And not even, I mean, you can roll back a lot of this. You get, can roll that's back. That's not even, that's not even like you mentioned that. Stop right there. <laughs> that is the most CONCACAF thing ever until but wait there's more so you can roll all of that back vice president of the country or of the club 60 years old replaced by his kid they got video of him in the locker room after the match handing out cash to the other team just like you love to see it you love it i mean it's dude my man had no stress he was like yo like I don't care. This is on film. Everybody's getting this money right here. Hey, you beat us. Here's your dough. And e- I'm telling you, everybody in that locker room got cash. Everybody. Yeah, we know because it was on video. Video. Like, <laughs> guys, if if there's a man with the other team handing you cash after a game, you do not film it. Like, get together. Like, bruh. I I know there's supposed to be like some common sense here, but just. Maybe put the phone away for a minute until you get that cash in your pocket. But the man, vice president of Suriname, uh, former convicted of drug trafficking, I believe. I don't want alleged convicted of drug trafficking. Um, Vice president of the country, owner of the club, 60 years old. uh, The oldest player in a international club competition. We've got a record holder. Ronnie Brunswick is our CONCACAF man of the year. Uh, first performance. <laughs> uh, CD Olympia obviously had taken the cash. Uh, I guess their story was this was like compensation for their rough time in Suriname because like their flight had got delayed and they had like issues with their bus, things like that. CD Olympia got booted from the tournament. Um after this 6 0 victory over Inter Mongo Tapo, Suriname, just like. Well, both teams did. I mean, I know one, yeah, the well, other team was eliminated, but both teams got yeah. booted. Yeah, both teams got booted, both for just absolutely insane reasons. Um, putting CONCACAF on the map, though, just like the, the videos that came out of this, like Twitter was ablaze as soon as that game started just screenshots like the dude just on the field. That is not a man who is fit to be playing in a continental club championship tournament. It's quite, it's quite possible that that was the most streamed CONCACAF league game of all time. I, I I don't have the numbers. Just based on Twitter reactions. Like there was like, I mean, Twitter, like there were people who did not watch soccer. Who was like, yo, are you watching this game with the six-year-old vice president and his son? And all? Oh, yes. Yes, man. Of course I the am. The vice president of the country. Just incredible. All right. I mean, so I, shout I, out. I, I, I motion that we name this episode the, uh, Ronnie, <laughs> the, Brunswick Ron- Memori- the Ronnie Brunswick uh, 2021 CONCACAF year in review. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have Second. to come up with an award going forward. Presented by Flow Sports. Yeah. We give out we give out the Ronnies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah the Ronnies. The, the best in CONCACAF. I, I think we got something for 2022. Yeah. Someone someone put this in the in the notes. All right. Um, so that that's the important thing to take away from CONCACAF League. Um trying to think of if there's any other dumb shit that happened. Uh St. Lucia dropped out of World Cup qualifying before they actually played a game. Uh, there was definitely some contentiousness in St. Lucia. Apparently, like the federation just told FIFA, it's like, yo, we're out. And 
didn't talk to the government, didn't let the players know ahead of time. They're just like, yeah, we're not playing. Um, it has some to do with COVID, some to do with finances, but St. Lucia was the first team eliminated in CONCACAF on their own volition. Uh, which and is that, that came like within, like, I want to say within 24 hours of World Cup qualifying starting. So, I mean, it was a very late decision mm-hmm. um, that, and it, there was a lot of like, I know the reporting out of that was, they're they are they are canceling it oh no they're just going to forfeit this one game uh there was a lot of back and forth but then in, they finally did uh, withdraw from the the qualification process as a whole i think one of the central themes of Concacaf in general over the year was uh, i mean you touched on it a little bit earlier eric was usa versus mexico there was a lot of instances of usa versus mexico in finals this year but it wasn't just on the international level there were a couple on the club level as well. The Campiones Cup and the League's Cup both were Liga MX versus MLS. MLS took the Campiones Cup. Liga MX took the League's Cup. So uh, expect that to be a battle. Uh, and, and just as they kind of interact more at, between the two leagues, the, probably the two top leagues in CONCACAF, as they interact more together, you're going to see more of these battles. But I do think it 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 brings an opportunity for some of these other leagues to step up and be that third or fourth team. You know, we, we had uh, the, the Canadian premier league is starting to take off a little bit and their country, Costa Rica, while their, their national team has gone down slightly, their league is still really, really good. Honduras, Guatemala, uh, Jamaica all have some really good teams uh, for in their domestic league. So I think 2022 will be, hopefully the the start of something with all this money that's coming in from all these tournaments and, and qualifying and everything else. Hopefully that means that we're going to see a lot more investment into things like the CONCACAF league and other just domestic leagues so that these teams have an opportunity to grow. Speaking of other dumb shit that happened this year, <laughs> um, Canada played two world cup qualifiers in Edmonton, Canada in <laughs> November. <laughs> <laughs> and then decided to follow that up with playing two more games in Hamilton, Ontario, scheduled for next year. But they made that decision this year. Just the absolute, I mean, the can specifically that Canada Mexico game where I mean there was it was in it, it was below zero. It was six feet of snow. I mean, it was. Um, we, we started this as a, an ode and an homage to the Caribbean nations, um, uh, in CONCACAF, uh, and then the smaller nations like Canada and, in, and they, they took that, um, and, and they took it away from us and took it really, really cold. Listen, you know what? I, I give them credit, you know, own what you are in Canada. It's a frozen wasteland. And you know what? You just embrace <laughs> what you're meant to be. And you know what they got? They played two games in Edmonton. No one wants to go to Edmonton. They knew that. And they got six points out of it. So you know what? Claps to Canada for getting it done in the way that they can get it done. Speaking of the Caribbean, we can't, we, we have to mention briefly the fact that uh, Jamaica said, hey, uh, this game against the United States will not be with uh, fans in the stands. <laughs> and the fans were like, I'm sorry, what? And two hours later, the government said, Ha, just kidding. We're gonna have fans. Uh, <laughs> and, 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 nope, nope. COVID, COVID. Don't worry about the. Don't worry about the COVID thing. Yeah. We'll figure out. We'll have strict, strict requirements for everyone to go to the game. But yeah, you guys can still come. So, uh, yeah, COVID wreaked a lot of havoc with regards to logistics. But that was a funny one. Uh, never before have I seen a game uh, be closed door and then opened in the span of three hours. Oh yeah, that was a quick one. We'll we'll touch more on that soon, but. One last dumb thing I want to get to before we move on to some more prestigious stuff. Um, Trinidad and Tobago, they did have uh, some uproar over. So Gary Griffith, the police commissioner of Trinidad and Tobago, allegedly influenced the Federation to put his son on the national team for the World Cup qualifiers. They did not qualify. They did not advance. His son, questionable talent level, allegedly. Huge uproar after the failure to qualify about 
the dude, the police chief's dude, his son, getting into World Cup qualifying. You know, with these smaller countries, there's always instances where it's like, you know, maybe some people have too much power, but Gary Griffith, shout out to him for uh, being a good dad and getting his kid on the national team. That was great stuff. Great stuff. Uh, so amongst other dumb shit, that was things we need felt we needed to touch on. I want to talk about 2021 and fashion. a great year for fashion in CONCACAF. Donald, do you kind of want to walk us through some of the beautiful rebrands we've seen in 2021? Well, first of all, I, I think CONCACAF, if they did anything better than the rest of the world, it was two things. It was Nations League and it was yeah. rebrands and new kits because the new kits coming out of CONCACAF Nations were on fire this year from the U.S. to Anguilla. Shout out Anguilla. Shout out Anguilla. Uh, uh, the bull, the bull scene taking over in Montserrat and Trinidad Tobago. Shouts to them. Shouts to Vinci Heat. They came out with some heat. Uh, it just all over the place. Shout yeah, out I mean, Bermuda. Bermuda Bermudas. had some great kids. Kids were hot. It, it was it, Jamaica. Even has some good kids. I know they carried over yeah. from 2021 uh, or from 2020, but th- they had some fire kids too. And really. I feel like the brands have stepped up in a lot of areas with some of these teams They a lot of brands shout out, shout out stimulus friend of the pod. Um, yeah. They you know, took on some new, uh, some, some smaller places and saying, Hey, look, smaller company, give us your best shot. See what you can do. And they came with some fire. They were able to kind of let loose and really break, break outside of the box that a lot of these teams have been inside. So shots to them. And also Mexico, uh, you, know, you know, we here in the podcast, we are we are we very much do not like the Mexican national team or its federation, but I will say that Oiler rebrand fans. is quite nice. Yeah, but Oiler their rebrand is quite nice. Chanting. So yeah, the, the the rebrand is quite nice. And uh, I want to give a shout out to Rob, uh, Rob Uzri, who um, really pointed out he deconstructed that the Mexico, the New Mexico logo. Um, and there's a very clear L in there and it's just fitting. Um <laughs> Because of all the L's they took against the United States in 2021. Listen, the U.S. beat them so bad in 2021, they had to rebrand. Mm-hmm. They yeah, I mean, they're they called L Tree for a reason. <laughs> they couldn't walk into Rio. 2022 looking like they did because all they took in that uh, those kits was L's. <laughs> um, but really, Anguilla, those stimulus kits, like Anguilla might be one of the best-looking national teams on the planet. They're definitely not the best on the field, ranked 209 in the world today, but they're easily top 10 in kits. Um, that, like, I feel like that was really the stepping stone for the rest of CONCACAF. It's like, oh, we need to raise our game here. Um, you saw Montserrat, the Emerald Boys, dropping Lowe's new kits with Bowl, really nice. Trinidad and Tobago even jumping on with Bowl and getting their new kits. They've just absolutely great looks for these teams. Um, Mexico with a new crest. Also Costa Rica with a new crest. Um, Their old crest was very, I don't know, interesting. Like, it was clip arty. I didn't mind it, though. I didn't didn't mind it. It was very, very, like, signature. Like, I saw that and was like, yes, Costa Rica. But mm-hmm. their new simplified crest is just a CR, very nice. Um, Costa Rica's Costa Rica's new crest is a very good example of no one did not knowing you needed something until you saw it. Like, yeah, I didn't know they needed a rebrand until I saw the the rebrand, and I was like, oh, that's there you go. That's what that's what I'm looking for right there. So, uh, yeah, shouts to them. They did really well with something that I again I didn't think needed rebranding. If you're going to do it, make sure it's better. And I think it is. Yeah. 
And also, I do want to include El Salvador. El Salvador dropping new kits, courtesy of U.S. Border Customs. Uh, <laughs> dudes have a brand new kit out of Umbro, and U.S. Border Patrol is like, yo, check out this, this counterfeit merch we, sne- we seized. And they post it online. It's like, yo, those are the new El Salvador kits. What are you yeah, doing? They got a cease and we, desist. And we need them. <laughs> yeah. And we need them. <laughs> We're gonna need let's also remember that it was the cincinnati it got seized in cincinnati by the chicago border protection division there is no mm-hmm. border in cincinnati i don't know what the hell they're doing well there is it's the border between ohio and kentucky and luckily for kentucky's airport or for cincinnati's airport it's located in kentucky uh, so they don't have to cross any border to go into ohio Listen, Cincinnati was good to us this year, so I'm. This is true. Uh, I'll, I'll leave them out of it. They can be considered Northern Kentucky for right now. All yeah, right, so they're definitely Northern Kentucky, and I'll accept that because I know what how much it irritates the people of Cincinnati. <laughs> I mean, it could be worse. They could be part of Ohio. Like, mm. there are worse things in life. Oh, I mean, they're so deluded that they think of themselves as better because they live in Ohio. Delusions of grandeur. All right. But a lot of beautiful new kits, beautiful rebrands. CONCACAF, you're just looking really good right now. Um, The last big thing I really want to touch on is a recap of our Pot on the Road series. Now, Donald and I got to do a bunch of traveling this year. Uh, We don't really consider Pot on the Road for, like, domestic games. But we hit the road to outside of the United States to visit CONCACAF and really embrace the concacaf of these nations. Uh, so first up, Donald El Salvador. What did you take out of that trip to El Salvador? Uh, I think like you, it was our first time in El Salvador, and it was amazing. The, the stadium, uh, getting a standing ovation, Entering the stadium as an away fan, I think, is probably the highlight of being a fan on the road this year. Yeah, just a background. Don and I attended the U.S. World Cup qualifier against El Salvador at Estadio Cuscatlan, like the cathedral of Central American soccer. What was it like visiting Cuscatlan? It was terrific. I mean, they told us it was going to be uh, reduced capacity. And it was reduced <laughs> it was by not. about 500 people. Um, it was a negative full, it was, it was 50%. A full, it was a full gym. Um, and they were, they were live the entire time. Um, they're and belting out their national anthem. They were ear splitting loud. Uh, the fireworks going off for the first 10 or so minutes of the game, both inside and outside of the stadium. Um, just it, it had everything. And even on the field, there was a lot of fireworks. I mean, for, for us fans, it was kind of a, a game that was, uh, you would consider drab, but I think for the El Salvador fans, it was their first world cup qualifier, uh, in, in the final round in like 10 years. So they were hyped and they were ready to go. And it showed on the field and in the stands. It was a great, great, great experience. Yeah. Wonderful experience. Personally, it was my first police escort. Um, us getting from the hotel to the stadium. So it was, it was a wonderful experience for me. The game, the fireworks were going on before the game and during the first five minutes. Um, but zero, zero draw can't be upset going to see your team on the road and getting a point, but just an absolutely wonderful experience in El Salvador. Uh, we followed that up by heading to Honduras for the U S world cup qualifier there uh down sum up in two words what is the important thing we took back from honduras power chicken we got a winner yes um i think power chicken was just the most influential part of this trip for me um just absolutely wonderful to die for chicken like i would go back to san pedro sula just to go to power chicken just absolutely fantastic absolutely fantastic now and we had been like we spent time in san Salvador, we spent time in san pedro sula as an american you're like oh those are very dangerous cities i think it i thought it was fine like 
I wasn't concerned. There were plenty of people around with guns that would have taken care of anything that would have gone wrong. Uh, I'm from Detroit. What, I didn't notice. <laughs> it was fun. Well, was, was it in El Salvador where we were looking for a restaurant and the guy with the gun like kind of pointed us into the, the patio bar? With Yeah, we were going to Papoose's and, and we're like, yeah, hey, where's this, where's this restaurant? And he kind of goes, Yes, it's right over here, and we're like kind of like ducking out of the way, like yeah. So, so that way, yes, <laughs> we will go that way after you after you lower your weapon. We'll go that way. Um, and he was just like, I mean, he was very very nice guy. He just uh, he he had his hands his hands were preoccupied, so he had to point with you know what his hands were preoccupied with. So is what it is. Yeah, um, Estadio Olimpico, great like prime Concacaf environment. No scoreboard. Big fences, great game. Honduras jumps up to that 1-0 lead. U.S. comes back and wins 4-1. Great, great night for us um, in Honduras. Uh, next up, we in October, we headed to Panama. Panama, what are your thoughts on that trip? Uh, Panama is always great. I, I mean, the U.S. didn't get the win there, but uh, that did not uh, diminish from the fun time that we had at rum bars and and just around the city. It was, it was fantastic. I mean, Panama is for Americans is probably the closest American city. That's not in America. I mean, it's basically Miami South um, with way more Spanish. You do need to understand Spanish a little bit more in Panama city, but it was a fantastic time. And I would go back there any, any day. I've now done Panama city twice. I would do it three times. I would do it four times. Just had an absolutely wonderful time there. Uh, shout out to Pedro Mandinga Rum Bar. My favorite place, maybe in the world. Um, just the vibes are immaculate. I had a great time there. Um, just absolutely fantastic night. And the game, as a U.S. fan, leaves some things to be desired. Uh, but what are your thoughts on the environment there? Uh, probably the best conca caffeine that we saw this year by one team, oh, yeah. not by both oh, by yeah. one team. Cause the end of that game was one for the, for the record books for sure. That was a free lesson for all of us. Yeah. Oh yeah. How do you, yeah, how do, how to conquer calf one Oh one, two Oh one. It was, it was like a, it was like a, you know, a double course. Like it was a masterclass masterclass. Mm-hmm. And then lastly, November Jamaica, is there anywhere else you'd rather be? in November than the Caribbean. I I tell people this all the time. I said it on this podcast. I'll say it again. Everyone who is of sound mind and body should go to Jamaica at least once in their lifetime. I say at least once, because once you go the first time, you will definitely go back. This is like my ninth time, eighth or ninth time back in Jamaica. There will be a 10th time. It, It is, it is one of the great places on this planet. And jerk chicken is like only 10% of the reason why. And jerk chicken is fantastic. Your chicken would be 90% of the reason why for me. So we'll even it up to the 100%. You can have the 10. I'll take the 90. Uh, that was an absolutely incredible trip. The game was good. Uh, the Being in the office, like, I kind of wish I got to experience that um, with a full crowd. Even without a full crowd, like, you could tell how passionate the fans were. Um, all the people in Jamaica, super nice, just absolutely wonderful wonderful experience overall highly recommend the traveling like if there's one thing you can get out of this podcast really the the reason why we started this is to talk about like the magic of our region you know it's not just the soccer it's not just the dumb soccer it's not about the incredibly dumb things that happen around the soccer it is just like how wonderful our little corner of the world is. And you might turn tune in to other international soccer tournaments and you might look to Europe as what you want soccer to be. But what we have already is everything you could ever want. Oh, for sure. And look, this is not the end of our traveling. We have oh, yeah. qualifying coming up soon. I, I know I know we're going to get Jonathan out to one of those in 2022. And Let's like go. I mentioned before, we will be in our element. I, I promise you this. We're going to be going to some Nations League games. That's going to happen. 
And if we can get all three of us at one, there might be a live pod. I, I, I'm not going to guarantee it. But I'm just going to say, if we can get all three there, we're going to try to do a live pod well, in we, that country. We, we, we know that we will have everyone together uh, pending COVID restrictions um, in the frozen wasteland of Canada. That's true. Yeah. yeah. You heard, heard it here first. The exclusive first pod on the road of 2022 will be take, taking place in frozen ass Canada in January. <laughs> we should um, do it from a Tim Hortons. Which one? There are so many options. Uh, Just anyone. Well, we could do it from all three. We could, yeah. <laughs> we'll all be at each end of each. Each was be at a different <laughs> one. Like, which one's you trying? Oh, at the one over here in the corner. Oh, yeah, I'm at that one. I'm at the one in the other corner down the street. I, I'm pretty sure there are more Tim Hortons locations than people in Canada. Oh, uh, that's close. It's pretty close. I mean, we stole some and brought them to the United States because, I mean, T Hose is terrific. Um, yeah. It's yeah, solid. It, it's nothing special, but it's solid. It's no Krispy Kreme. Nah. Mm. See, we're not getting into food wars here, but Canada, I think will the episode for Canada will be very special. It's almost a, I hate to say it, but it's almost like a quasi home game for me. Uh, as a Buffalo native, it's supposed to be like hey, I'm from Detroit. It's, I mean, it's basically home for us too. But like Hamilton, Ontario is as close as the U.S. is ever going to play it to Buffalo, New York. This um, is true. I mean, it shouldn't be, throughout... but that's it. Yeah. So there will be um, many things discussed, many adventures adventured, uh, many tables broken on that trip uh, north. Um, Especially after the the Canadian Federation took shots at Buffalo. Yeah. A.O. Buffalo picking a fight with the entire nation of Canada. Uh, I mm, no, I'm a, I'm a ride. I'm a ride for A.O. Buffalo. I'm pretty sure it's Canada that declared war on Buffalo. Um, but the problem is, I don't think they recognized what they did. Buffalo yeah, will, right? will 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 come in force. I'm looking forward to all of Buffalo, upstate New York. That hey, they don't play. Eric, you know this. They don't. The Buffers don't play, and Canada might. I know they picked a fight with Mexico by putting the game in Hamilton in uh, Edmonton. They may not have wanted to pick a fight with Buffalo by talking smack on Twitter. Mm, we, are, come back. we are about to pull a figurative jersey over their heads and start about throwing to pull up. up. Cucks. They're about to pull up. <laughs> so you got a lot to look forward to in 2022. Just before we wrap up, guys, do we have any last thoughts on 2021 in CONCACAF? What was your favorite moment? What, what are you going to take from this year? Jonathan, we'll start with you. I mean, I, I, I said that my favorite game was definitely the uh, CONCACAF Nations League final. My favorite moment is most definitely the Ronnie Brunswick moment. Um, but I just, uh, I'm thankful for the friends we made along the way throughout CONCACAF this year. Um, looking forward to, um, unfortunately, I did not get to participate in any pods on the road this year, but uh, am looking forward to them next year. So, um it was uh, it was about falling back in love with Concacaf this year. Love it, love it. Looking forward to getting you. See, there's so much room for growth in the pot on the road, so we're gonna get you there, Donald. What do you got? Yeah, well, I mean, for me, I I, I spoke about my uh, favorite moments of the year, so I won't rehash those. But I will say, I am hopefully, you know, next year we, you know, the pod the brand is strong now, so I'm looking forward to all of these federations. Uh, you know, trying to figure out like, you know, running, screaming, kicking to get to the front of the line of who wants to be the first federation to bring the pod to their country and to one of their games to to broadcast about life and soccer in their country. We will do a laser focus from a country. I hope we can do that in 2022, but it's up to you out there, federations, the, the 21 of you who are out there who are listening, you guys can fight to be who's first in line. The other 21, they're just going to have to wait. All we're asking is for you, CONCACAF Nations out there, to open yourselves to us like we have opened our hearts to you. That's that's really what exactly. we're looking for here. And we know they like paying people off over out there. 
Exactly. Like, I'm, just, I'm just looking is. from I'm just looking for my cut here. Everyone my has cut price, is jerseys. And ours ours is lower than you could ever imagine. Yeah. We're like, cheap. We are yeah, cheap. We are cheap. We can if be you want to send me easily. a jersey, that would be great. Honduras, if you want to send us some power chicken, that would be absolutely lovely. Jamaica, if you want to send us some Appleton and jerk chicken along with your jerseys, we will accept all three. Like we'll split, we'll, we'll figure out who gets what. We'll do a draw on 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 the air figure out who gets what but we appreciate all of you and we hope that you appreciate us Don, do you have a favorite moment i i told you my favorite moment was was knowing that ethan horvath is going to stop that penalty kick and he stops the penalty kick and and wins the game i mean that was as close to a walk-off penalty save as you can possibly get uh it, i thought that was terrific in a game that was just the most lit game ever one of the top five games in one of the top five to 10 rivalries on the planet. That one, that, that was probably the best one for me. I think the best moment uh, since you guys did Ronnie, I'm going to say it was Guatemala firing their coach after not losing a game only to then be because they get, did not make the gold cup. And then 24 hours later, finding out they did get put into the gold cup. They need to find a coach and get all their players back because the game that they're supposed to be playing in is 36 hours away. So I think that right there is a moment where logistics, we talked about how they committed logistics. That was a, a major test of CONCACAF logistics. Yeah. I mean, for me, like it's clear that the love that we have for CONCACAF is genuine and coming out of the pandemic, I said my first games in person were the CONCACAF Nations League finals in Denver. And now for me, who as a small child, I always dreamed of attending a CONCACAF Nations League final. Um, just be, being there for that moment and just being there for the moment and that first game, the late goal by Jordan Pifak to win it, like that thrill after having not had that for a year and a half, just that moment I'm going to remember for a long time. And the joy of that lasted like two, three days until I got to feel that joy of Ethan Horvath stopping that penalty right in front of us. Just like being from Buffalo, especially like you always have like this fatalistic, like, it's going to go wrong somehow. You're just waiting for it. And like that moment, it did not go wrong. And just like that elation, that joy really missed that over the year and a half that we spent away from soccer, uh, getting to go to all these games over the course of the year. I mean, I went to a handful, uh, two of the gold cup games, the gold cup final in Vegas, just like Las Vegas and the gold cup, just two of my most favorite things in the world combined. Um, Miles Robinson, Don can test the list literally the entire night before people were just singing Miles Robinson songs. And then he goes and scores the winner in extra time in the final, just absolutely incredible. And then these trips, El Salvador, Honduras, Panama, Jamaica, just incredible. But my favorite moment, if I had to distill it into one specific moment, um, Man, I would have to say that first day of World Cup qualifying where I got to sit here and watch on Paramount Plus all these island nations playing the most important games they'll play for years and just getting to sit in my home and watch it in all these stadiums across CONCACAF. So seeing us getting back to what we do best, and that's play sparsely attended games in remote island destinations, um, that's what was most special for me this year. Yeah, I, I'm going to piggyback off this for a second and give a shout out. I think my second favorite moment was um, I, both Eric and I have a friend that uh, played for the the U23 Dominica team. And I remember I you know, saw him right as these games were starting around that same time. And I was like, hey, man, have you heard that you're going to be able to watch Dominica games on Paramount Plus? And just he hadn't he hadn't seen that news yet and just seeing how excited he was to be able to watch um his home nation play uh in world cup qualifying was was pretty awesome yeah. i think for me just piggybacking off of that um let's keep piggybacking boys yeah i, I think 
there, no matter what your favorite moment is, and and all of you, when we post this episode, we want you to tell us your favorite moments from CONCACAF this year, because I know everyone's, some may be the same, some may be completely different, some may be things we barely covered that you just thought were awesome. But there were moments this year that CONCACAF gave us where, and this is not to the to diminish the pandemic, but for a moment you were able to forget that we are living in these times, right? You were able to hug your neighbor, hug your friend. You were able to celebrate on Twitter or, or, you know, watch a game between Haiti and, you know, the U S Virgin islands on, on a streaming service. And everyone was able to watch the game at the same time and react to it. Uh, Those sort of things that brought us back to the old days where we were able to watch games together and just kind of have this neighborhood pub that we call Twitter or your local pub to talk about it. So I, I really appreciated that we were able to get back to some of that. We're still not done. We're still not out of the woods yet, but we did have some moments that allowed us to be ourselves and express ourselves in the way that CONCACAF knows how. And that's where we are all linked, whether you're American, Mexican, Costa Rican, Honduran, or Bermudan. We have those moments that we were able to share together because this is the greatest confederation on the planet. Another thing I do want to know, um, it's a special thing that happened this year. Chuck Blazer is still dead, so that we got that going <laughs> for us as well. Um, but I just want to say thanks to you two, to Donald, to Jonathan, for coming on this ride with me. Uh, it's been really fun having this podcast throughout the year. Uh, we're looking forward to doing more episodes in 2022. If you haven't noticed from the way we title the episodes, like we're going through each episode is a different country. So we're going through all of them. So if you haven't gotten to your country yet, just wait, we're coming for you yet. Um, and that includes you, Canada. I will say this. You mentioned Chuck Blazer. I just want to let you guys know that in the spirit of it being almost the end of 2021, Jack Warner still sucks. And I think that's a good way to close. So Jonathan, you want to tell us about your, where people can find you? Um, you can find me at Speedway Soccer, um, at J Slape SSP on Twitter, and then also at Broadway Sports Media, and of course, World of CONCACAF, where we're at right now. Um, yeah, for me, at Blazing DW on Twitter, and you can also follow starsandstripesfc.com and at starsstripesfc on Twitter. Uh, we are there for all the U.S. Uh, coverage, but obviously head to the pod for everything CONCACAF. Again, thanks for listening. I'll take care of all the social media here. We're podcacaf, P-O-D-C-A-C-A-F, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Shoot us an email, podcacaf at gmail.com. We take all solicitations for advertising. So if you want to fund our show, we'd love for you to do that. It's been a labor of love so far. Um, We do this because we enjoy it. So thanks for listening throughout 2021. Thanks for all the subscriptions and the good ratings. We got a solid rating on Apple Podcasts. We got to keep getting those five-star ratings up. Um, But thanks for listening. Happy Conca Gathering. Have a good new year. And Jack Warner sucks.